You're watching Power Nation. Today, class is in session, and we have several subjects to cover. We show you ways to save some cash and improve your curb appeal with little effort. Patina Magic coming up. You know, guys, as we go through life, we all make decisions that can and will have an effect on upcoming events. Some of these in the moment may seem a little minuscule. And some can put you in an awkward situation. And to quote Mr. Newton, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So what did we learn? And whenever it's all said and done, it's simply science. Oh, you got us some drinks for the road. Got us some aspirin too. Mm, that's cool. Let's ride. What I'm referring to is the exterior appearance of your ride. Are you the only like shiny kind of person? Or you all right with primer? Or do you prefer that worn and weathered look? Some people never really consider a car complete or finished until the paint and chrome is polished to perfection. You ever heard of the term face value? Well, that's when somebody judges your car based solely on the appearance. You know, show reflections are great, but there's a few drawbacks. One, they're expensive. Two, it's got a lot of upkeep. And three, think about it. You always get a little nervous when someone gets too close. There are ways to make Mother Nature's handiwork look a whole lot better. And some of the techniques used are old school. This tip came from an older friend of mine that managed a used car lot, and this is a trick that they used to do back in the day to brighten up the color and rejuvenate that faux wood grain on their inventory. Now these three look completely different. My favorite, just by rubbing oil on the side of the car, is the transmission fluid. It actually looks deeper than the other two. I'm just curious how long this is gonna last. And, if it's gonna stay greasy. Man, that's way greasy. Now we're gonna label all three of these. That way when we come back, we know which one's what. You know the old saying, long hand is better than a short memory. Now some of you guys in the woodworking industry are probably familiar with linseed oil. And whether it's kind of cleaning up an old piece of furniture or sprucing up all that old wood grain in the bed of your pickup truck, You've probably used this stuff before, and you're familiar with how nasty and tacky it can be. So it's not uncommon to reduce it down with some turpentine. So just for the sake of science, I'll go ahead and apply this just by itself, and then we'll come back, reduce it, and we'll do it on a different section of the panel, and just kind of see which one gets the better product. Now just checking out the surface of this old crusty charger, we got some original patina that, you know, might turn out pretty good. And then we got some really nasty crusty rustiness. And being a curious cat I am, I kind of wanted to check out and see what this linseed oil does on both surfaces. At first glance, I can already tell the stuff's making a huge difference. And if our reduced mixture looks this good, I'm pretty excited to see what the linseed oil does by itself. And just like Tom did over there, I'm gonna go ahead and mark my mixtures for future reference. This last product that we're gonna be applying is an actual polymer paint sealant. It's designed to, you know, protect your paint. Now, I'm gonna do it two different ways. I'm gonna just spray it on back here in the back, and then up here, spray it on, and then wipe off the excess. I'm curious to see if the amount of product on the front and back has a different sheen to it. I'm curious that this is probably gonna work better. It almost seems like I'm rubbing or massaging the material into the surface a lot more but we'll just have to come back and see. If 
You know, I really am curious to what all this stuff turns out like. You been staying busy? Oh yeah, we were kidding, man. That linseed oil's kind of nasty. Kind of nasty? That reminds me, I know a place we can stop. I don't know if I like the sound of that. Oh, it'll be fun, trust me. Might need some change though. Coming up, we don't turn the clock back, we crank it up. We have a little bit more paintwork that we're needing to take care of on road burner. And what I'm talking about isn't the usual stuff. You normally do a bunch of blocking and sanding trying to achieve a perfect reflection. It's obvious that you guys can tell that this doesn't even come close to matching this over here. We can't have it sticking out like an old sore thumb. So we need to give this thing the patina treatment. The paint itself is in pretty good shape. However, it does have a few nicks and chips here and there, and even a couple of spots of rust. To get this to look like that isn't all that difficult. There are a few techniques that you can apply, and some of them are a bit primitive. You just need the foresight of what you're trying to accomplish. You're basically creating a piece of artwork. Hmm. Can you sense the anger? of the artist, it's quite intense. The first thing that we're gonna address is the rust. Now normally with paint and body work, corrosion is a bad thing. But in this instance, we're actually looking for a bit more. So, we gotta do some grinding. Obviously, we need some bare steel, so some of that orange paint has to come off. You can use a grinder, paint stripper, or even a carbide bit. It's all up to you and what you're trying to accomplish. We're not gonna strip this entire thing, just the spots where we want the rust. <sighs> to make things rust in a hurry, it don't take much. You need a heat source, a corrosion factor, and an oxygen promoter. So. If you got one of these heating devices, some salt and peroxide, you're in business. I have painted a simulated rust effect on one of our other projects. All it took was a couple different colors of paint and a brush, but this time we're going authentic. With everything all rusty and crusty, now it's time to move on. On Road Burner, the main paint color is black with orange under it. In some places, like the top of the car, the black is thin and almost worn and weathered away. But on the sides, it's mainly all chipped up and has scratches here and there. This is what we're trying to duplicate. You're probably thinking the next thing we're gonna do is paint this entire panel black, and then we're gonna get all crazy and show it some corporal punishment and make it look all bruised and abused. That's really not the case. I have a technique here that I wanna apply that's a bit more refined. However, it does cause you to think a little backwards. We're using some petroleum jelly as a congealed form of masking tape. This prevents the paint we're applying from sticking to the surface. Sometimes whenever I'm applying this stuff, I like to do it over a relatively large area, apply my top coat, and then wipe it off and check it out and see what it looks like. Doing it that way, it allows you to fine tune your artwork, because if you don't like what you see, you can just simply apply more of your top coat. Also painting this in multiple layers, well, it creates a stair step effect. It's all in what you're wanting to try to do. It's kind of like you've painted over chips and then painted it and more chips and then you painted it. Once the paint is dry to the touch, all you have to do is wipe off that petroleum jelly. Let's do that see what this thing looks like. After a quick rub down with some glass cleaner, it was off for the final detail.
I have one last touch that I want to do that's going to involve some airbrushing. If you'll notice here on the top of the fender, there's kind of a rust stain that runs down the top of it, and I want to continue that as if it dripped down here onto our panel. I also want to kind of complement our rust that we created as that stain look where the water runs down it. Won't take much, but it's definitely going to add some detail. So with a couple of powder pearls mixed in some clear base coat, we can simulate that aging effect. A little here, a little there, boom. What you looking at? Let me see your grill. The next thing that we're gonna address on the outward appearance of our old rusty crusty bird here is the grill. For this old grill, it's easy to see that it's seen its better days. And I'm gonna guess they were many, many moons ago. With our chrome and bright work, we want it to look fresh and clean, kind of like our bumper. You can obviously tell that it's been swapped out. Up here, we've got some work to do. When these Plymouths rolled off the assembly line, the grill was definitely a focal point. Mopar started with an anodized aluminum shell and gave it multiple colors and textures to increase the appeal. Around the headlight openings, they used a dark gray metallic color with a rough texture. Then to add a bit of detail and to create some cool effects, some semi-gloss black was used. If you look close, those two chrome rectangles seem to be floating. Now what we're about to do is what I refer to as a shade tree restoration. With our grill and headlight bezels having that anodized coating, to replicate that usually requires the help of a professional. There are companies out there that reproduce these, but maybe it's not in your budget, or we all know that there has been some supply chain issues. So for you chalk mark style guys out there, what we're about to do isn't correct for your application. However, this procedure is gonna make these pieces stand tall when we're all said and done. So let's check out what we're working with. Our headlight bezels really aren't in that bad a shape. There are a few nicks here and there as expected, kind of like this big one where the hood has actually came in contact with it. Now as for our grill, it's about the same except for we've got a rather large dent here, but that's all swell and good. We'll just have to massage this stuff out first thing. Shoot, these things look a whole lot better just getting all that old paint off of them. The next thing that we're gonna do is spray them down with some self-etching primer and then follow that up with some filler primer. There are a few little blemishes here that have some nicks and stuff on them. I'm gonna use some sandpaper, mow them down first, then we can get to priming. Now we're also going to be using this stuff inside of our big fancy prep station. And you don't have to have one of these, you just need to make sure wherever you do it is a well ventilated area. If you're wondering why we're applying etch down first, it's actually to approve adhesion of our coatings. Self-etching primer has chemical adhering properties along with mechanical. Now we're gonna be applying some filler primer. This helps to fill in those nicks and chips, small imperfections. Now it's better to apply this stuff with several light coats. Don't try to cover it in one heavy coat. One, this allows it to dry actually faster and more thoroughly. I feel like a graffiti artist. After a few rounds of priming and sanding, our headlight bezels and grill shell is really turning out slick. The next thing we're gonna be doing is applying our color. I'm gonna be using some black, some charcoal metallic, and even some simulated chrome. Now with this, I'm gonna apply those in a different sequence from the headlight bezels to the grill shell because of the complexity of the shape of them. We're 
going to apply a cool little paint technique here on this silver that we just sprayed on. Now I have let this dry for about an hour, but what we're going to do now is give this a simulated brushed effect. I'm going to use a little gray scuff pad here, and basically all you do is drag it right across the surface. You don't want to press down too hard, and you also don't want to do it in multiple directions because it kind of gives it a crosshatch effect. I also like to use a gray and red pad. They have different grits to them, thus creating different depths of scratches. The last step to this little do-it-yourself project is going to be applying the top coat, or what oftentimes is referred to as a clear coat. This will give our parts quite a bit more depth and luster. The results are in. Minimal effort spent plus experimentation equals drastic improvement. We're definitely not in the office today. We're down in Steven's performance checking on a science experiment that we're in the middle of. That's right. We basically applied a bunch of goo to some old cars. We're going to see which one gave us the best result. We're going to use it on the road burner project. Speaking of project, that's what this old thing is. <laughs> Roll that one back up. I don't know. It's kind of a peach. Oh, she's something. A lot of fancy stuff, isn't it? Who needs sunny beaches in Florida when you got a view like this? Now, this first car is where I applied a whole bunch of lubricants, which is basically motor oil, transmission fluid, and even some penetrating oil. Really, it just looks like we cleaned it. This one here on the back where the transmission fluid is, it looks a little bit more greasy. Hmm. Don't really have much of a stickiness to it, but the transmission fluid does look the best, but I don't think I want to go down this path. So what'd you do up here on this one, boss? Well, you can kind of see right here, this section's a little bit shinier than the rest of the car, and this is just linseed oil by itself. And then on this back part is a 50-50 mixture of linseed oil and uh, turpentine. At first glance, looks like the shines are pretty similar. This one's got some stickiness. Back here on the back, it almost looks like the green is a little more concentrated. I wonder if that turpentine worked as a cleaner, but they are really close to the same, but suck that it's sticky. Joe, on this old yard bird here, if you will, I've sprayed on that polymer net shield. And on this one, I sprayed it on and wiped it off. Back here, I just simply squirted it onto the quarter panel. Up here, it's really not sticky at all. And that red under the decal does look a lot better. It's not all faded out yet, not too shiny either. What do you think? Yeah, there's a clear difference right there. I mean, back here it's way more shiny. Almost too much, really. Is it sticky at all? Eh, just a little bit. Let's go further and get back to work. Let's do it. Believe it or not, one of the main reasons we picked this exact car is the look and condition of the paint. We wanted a ride that looked battered and abused. With patina, the color can be somewhat rejuvenated, and that was the whole reason we took that field trip down to the Mopar Cemetery. And to basically really bring it back, you have to exfoliate the surface. Laying on top is a bunch of dead paint, giving you that dull gray reflection. Now, you don't want to get too aggressive here. You're just trying to take off that top layer. And just like whenever you're preparing for a night out on a town and you want to look your best, it's time to take a bath. Our plan of attack on cleaning this thing is super simple. We're going to take the hose pipe, wet the surface, and then spray the body down with some heavy duty degreaser and cleaner like you would pick up at a home improvement or even a parts store. And after it sets for a little while, we're going to scrub it down with some of these old grease rags. And it's pretty cool to watch. You'll actually get to see some of that dead paint wind up into the floor. Now, if you want some words of wisdom as far as the key to success here, about all I can tell you is, you better be prepared to use some elbow grease.
So after that little science experiment that we did down there at the salvage yard, the conclusion that we came up with is we're going to be using Sonax Polymer Net Shield. This will give us the look that we want with the added benefit of some paint protection. And application of this product is as easy as it gets. To completely coat a car, it only takes about 15 minutes to apply. You want to do this in small sections, normally a two foot by two foot square. You don't want the surface that you're using this on to be hot. It needs to be cool to the touch. It's easy to see that we went from ashy to alluring. Check it out, our old road burner definitely looks a whole lot better. Plus, it doesn't have a sticky or greasy feel like some of those other options had. If anything, she's soft to the touch. You know, I think we got quite a bit accomplished for the amount of effort we spent. Yeah, so what do you want to tackle next? I'm thinking probably a sandwich. Sounds good to me. You know, we still got rock, paper, scissors on who's gonna wire this thing. We did, you lost.